This is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I am here today to do a kitten chat. I recently finished Home on the Hill so I will have a post review of that coming for you at some point when I get around to it. <laughs> um, and I am currently working on another row of Outside the Sweet Shop. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recently put up a quarterly review video where I ran for all my whips, so feel free to check that out. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a row of the confetti marathon that is outside the sweet shop, and I'm loving it, but I only ever do a row at a time, otherwise I kind of burn out of the confetti a bit. So I'm thinking ahead to what I'm going to work on next, and I do have a couple of other whips on the go, which I would like to get out of the way, but they're both round drills, and I'm really not feeling round drills at the moment. So, I have been through my stash and I have picked out solar system to work on. So, people who maybe have only discovered Diamond Art Club a little more recently might be wondering why this looks a bit different because they do have a kit called Solar System that they sell, which is off the solar system, surprisingly, um, but it looks a little bit different. This is one that they bought out for their fourth anniversary sale, I believe. And this one was a limited edition. It was back when they used to do quite a few limited editions. Um, and I had both at one point, but I actually de-stashed the other because I decided I preferred this one. So yeah, this one is no longer available, but I really love it. I mean, I love both of them, but I like that this one's got a lot more blues and less just like black in it, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's a 76 by 56 centimetre painting, so sort of medium, average size one. And I did unbox it after that anniversary sale, so going back a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, if you want to see a full unboxing, there is one there. And I'm not going to do that today because I just want to crack on and get it kitted up. So, let me move all these bits to the side. And get the inner bits out. Whoops! <laughs> There's the drills and there is the sticker sheet. I'll just like really quickly show you some of it. Here it is. See it's like really nice and bright and colourful. I love it. There's this. <laughs> So yeah, really cool painting. I thought this one would be super fun. It's bright colours that you know I enjoy. It's actually got quite a lot of colour blocking in it. Um, and yeah, I just, I haven't done a space image yet, even though that's, you know, something I really enjoy. So, let me put that back in the bag for now. And get going. Right, it has 61 colours, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to use this storage, which, oh, <laughs> if you hear meowing, that's my cat leaving through the cat flap and my phone notifying me. Um, I unboxed this a little while ago on the channel and I found this on Amazon.com and I actually paid to kind of import it, I guess, via my stack free address. And I said in the video, oh, it was quite expensive because I had to do that, but I really wanted to try it. And I couldn't find it on amazon.co.uk. And then people in the comments <laughs> were like, hang on, cat, it is on amazon.co.uk. So you can buy this in the UK at a much cheaper price than I paid by the time I would shipped it over here. But yeah, it's actually a seed organizer. Um, that's how it's marketed and I wanted to give it a go because I think it's going to be really really good for diamond painting. It's got these different sized pots. It's like it's like an Elizabeth Ward style container if you actually prefer round pots which a lot of the time I do. It depends on my mood. Anyway so I'm going to do this one because it's got Yeah, it's got 65 slots. I had to just count them again, <laughs> which took me a while because maths is not my strong suit. Um, I was trying to remember what five by nine was. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's going to work perfectly for this. And I think storage containers that have different size pots are really good for places like Diamond Art Club 
or specifically for Diamond Art Club Brava, because Diamond Art Club is the only shop that I'm aware of that organises the drills by the size of the bag rather than DMC codes. So I can work through them sort of in that order and see how I get on. Okay. So let me get this chopped in half because I'm going to use these stickers. I did used to put these through my printer photocopier thingamajig to get a legend um, that I could keep. I kind of don't bother with that so much anymore because I find I don't really refer to it. Um, but yeah, that is an option. So I hope there's no static. I think these drills are from before the worst of the static because it was a big long period when drills tended to be very staticky and to be honest they still quite often are at the moment but before that they were okay. Let's see. So I've got my big bowl for putting all the rubbish in. I've got my stickers. I'll put that to the side. Okay, so let's start with the biggest strips of drills and see how they go with these big pots. I don't think they're all going to fit, so I should get some baggies ready. Ta da! <laughs> but it should be a lot better than the sort of art dot style small round pots. And let me make sure that I work out which are the biggest ones because I've only got eight. So these all only have one bag. That's got two bags. Okay. Oh, I thought they were the same color. They're so similar. Eight, two, three. It's really odd printing on these, actually. It's quite hard to work out the DMC. The numbers are a lot clearer these days. Okay. So, I've got four colours that have two bags each, so they're all going to get a big pot. And then I think if I take them from this side, these were the next biggest ones and I'm hopeful I will get these like a fair amount of them in the pots and then I'll move on to the smaller size pots. Okay where's my tray? I always have to kit up over a tray because I'm too messy. Now is there going to be any static in these? I wonder if it's worth giving these a quick um, wipe around with uh, what's the word, a dryer sheet first. I seem to remember when I tested this, when I unboxed it, that I felt like the pots were a bit staticky, so I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, it has been absolutely ages since I did a chatty video. I am, um, so I, I, I kind of keep notes on my phone just when I'm thinking of, well, just things that I've done, things that I think, oh, that might be worth having a chat about in a video. Um, so I know it's been ages because the last, like the oldest things on that list are from May and it's now the middle of June. So that's a little bit mental. Um, yeah, so like I was going to talk about how we went to centre parks in, in half term, but it feels like ancient history now. We'll tell you a bit about it, I guess, um, because it was... It was fun. So yeah, we went to Centre Parks with my parents. Centre Parks, if you don't know what it is, if you're not European or it's just not your jam, um, it's like an activity holiday. So you stay in lodges. They have um, what they call lodges. And they're like really quite nice. Um, like ours had a sauna and you have a kitchen, you've got ensuite bathrooms and all that kind of jam. So they're nice and comfortable. And then Centre Parks, oh, look at the static in that, hang on. That answers the question of whether there was static in this period. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's a really big swimming complex, which is, like, it's, it's brilliant. There's loads of different things to do in there and flumes and all of that kind of stuff. And then there are millions of other activities you can do. Now, it is an expensive holiday because um, 
most of these activities you have to pay extra for. We were there with my parents because they um, they like to take their grandchildren on holiday. So all of their grandchildren have had a special holiday with my parents where they've been taken to do something. And it was the turn of my son and his cousin, who's like the next one up. And my parents wanted to take them on this active holiday to centre parks because that would be their sort of thing. But my parents are getting a little bit old to do that kind of thing without younger adult support. So we went along basically. So that was how we came to be going. So basically we were very fortunate because although Centre Parks is not a cheap trip if you want to do all the activities and make the most of it, uh, we weren't actually paying my parents worse. We were very, very lucky. And it was really, really fun. Um, so the first couple of days, oh, we just, we did so many activities. I'm trying to think. Oh, we discovered a new game called Pickleball. I say discovered. I mean, plenty of people know what Pickleball is. None of us had heard of it. You play it on like a badminton court. And it's sort of like a mixture between badminton and soft tennis, I suppose. Because you have um, like badminton, similar to badminton rules. 996. Um, but you're using like a round ball and rackets that are a bit closer to a tennis racket. Anyway, it was good. And I played, and I'm not very sporty, I don't do very much, and it turned out I was all right at pickleball. My son was a bit annoyed because he asked me to play so that I could be on a team with my husband against the two boys. Um, and clearly he thought this would mean that <laughs> I would be the weak link that would make uh, his dad easy to beat turned out I was pretty decent and we won. <laughs> it's like very low impact so if you like that kind of racket sport but like me it tends to bother your shoulder and that kind of thing it's worth looking at. Um, so we did that kind of thing and what else did we do? The boys did laser combat, um, we did geocaching which was like you're following clues to get around and centre parks is big. <laughs> it takes up a lot of space in the forest um, so yeah when you do geocaching and it takes you all around you cover some ground on that activity um, yeah but it was fun the only fly in the ointment was that my mum came down with covid um, halfway through she, she was sort of she felt a bit coldy um, but she wasn't too bad and then the next day she really felt quite rough and she had some quite covid -y symptoms I would say like you know she had that horrible scratchy dry throat and that kind of thing and I'd taken some tests with me so she tested and she was a bit shocked so we all kind of had to keep our distance a little bit after that which was a shame and she was okay she is um she's pretty medically vulnerable so she does qualify to get antivirals and that kind of thing. Um, so it, it was good that she came down with it sort of the day before we actually ended up leaving because then she was able to get the antivirals and she felt a lot better. So we all worry about her if she's ill, as you do. And then actually we got home and Harry was ill. Harry had a weekend in hospital. My cat sort of said he hadn't eaten that much in the morning on the day we were coming home, but I didn't think too much of it because my cats have quite variable appetites. Some days they do eat a lot more than others. Um, so that was fine. But I got home and then realised he still wasn't particularly eating. He had a little bit and then suddenly he was sick. I won't go into any detail about that so I don't trigger anyone. Um, and then he was sat there just really not looking comfortable. Like, it's one thing to be... <coughs> oh, excuse me, I had to sneeze. It's one thing to be um, off your food and, you know, cats do sometimes vomit and that kind of thing. But he was just sat hunched looking really miserable. So we made the decision to take him to the out of hours vet because this was now late on Friday night. It was like 10 o'clock, I think. And my husband 
drove him because it's actually quite a long way. It's odd because we live in a city, but you actually have to leave the city and drive sort of 20, 25 minutes to a nearby town to get to an out of hours vet. I'm really not sure why. It seems a bit silly to me because if you live in the city and you can't hop in a car and drive, you, you can't access out of hours pet care. But by the by, he went and we thought we were just being cautious, but actually when they checked him, they said that his temperature was like really high, much higher than it should be, um, and that they were concerned about that. So they ended up taking him in. He had to, they, they said that he would um, be in there for two nights um, because they thought it would take that long to get him back to normal. In the end, he came home the next day. So I rang for an update and they were like, oh, good news, he can come home, which was brilliant. Although then it was a bit stressful because he came home, but he still wasn't quite right. And it was, you know, oh, should we have actually brought him home? Is he ready to be home yet? He's not really eating. He still doesn't look very happy. But then he did perk up. So, yeah. That was all a bit stressful. And then Xander had to have dental work done this month. It has been the month of, of cat bills. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just I'm glad we have them insured. I've always been struggling to eat right now. And that made me nervous too, because you know, they give you all the disclaimers because he was gonna have to have general anesthetic. So then they say, you know, there's obviously risks and what do you want us to do if his heart stops? Do you want us to do CPR? I was like, yes, I want you to do CPR. He's my baby. He's only seven. Um, but he was absolutely fine. Came around quickly, came home. They didn't have to do as much as they thought, so his recovery wasn't bad. So, yeah. All could have been worse. There's just been a lot all at once, it felt like. And then what else have we done? We also had a weekend away in June to the Lake District, my husband and I. So if you've been watching for a while, you may know that my husband and I both turned 40 in January. Um, and my present for my husband was to take him away for the weekend um, for him to be able to do wild swimming. So he's, my husband's a swimmer basically. When he was a teenager, he used to train pretty heavily he would, you know, train most mornings and evenings all the week. Um, he competed nationally, you know, he was really good at it. And then as an adult, he doesn't do that side of things anymore. But he has discovered through doing tria triathlons that he really likes wild swimming. Um, so it's a bit tricky in the UK at the moment. We have a slight issue with the quality of our water. So he's a bit limited in places that he can actually swim these days. You can't just hop in a river or sea necessarily very safely. Hopefully our water will be cleaned up um, soon. <laughs> so he swims when we're at home in this um, privately owned lake that is used just for this purpose. Um, and then the Lake District, a lot of the lakes, again, are very safe in terms of water quality and it's very very picturesque just in case I mean I'm talking about the Lake District as though everyone knows what that is people who aren't from the UK may well not know but it's an area in the northwest of the UK um, where are there just there's a lot of lakes concentrated together and it's very scenic very beautiful area of the country so he'd been wanting to swim in some of these lakes and it's quite a long drive from us um, and also generally if we all go away as a family or something, you know, we'll all be doing family things. So it just, it wasn't something he'd really had an opportunity to do. So the present was, I'll take you up there, take you there for the weekend. And it's a weekend for you to just go and swim in lakes and do all those things without, you know, worrying about doing joint activities. Um, so yeah, that's what we did. My parents-in-law took my son. Um, so he went, because it would have been quite boring for him because of the nature of it. it, was just, you know, sitting around the side of lakes and stuff. So he went with them and they were going to take him to their house, but they ended up actually taking him down to the south coast of England to stay in an Airbnb for the weekend. So they had a lovely weekend too. And then my husband and I went and we stayed in this lovely Airbnb we found. 
Um, so it's just a nice little self-contained flat, but it was you know, really nicely done. And we were in a place called Keswick, which is the north of the Lake District. So we had like the longest drive up there we possibly could have done. It was about five hours, which I know to people who come from geographically much bigger countries, <laughs> That might not sound that bad. In the UK, that's a, that's a pretty long drive. You know, we're small here. We're used to things being quite close. Um, and the traffic was bad. So it, basically, we lost our whole Friday to going up there. And then we had Friday evening. And uh, my husband fit in a swim in the lake nearest to us, which was Derwent Water. And then we went out for a really nice meal, actually. We'd asked the people who owned the Airbnb to recommend some places, and they did, and it was good. Um, so we went to a place called, I think it was called the Fell Pot or something, because they had these special bowls. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> and then on the Saturday, we went and had a little wander around the market in Keswick and had breakfast out. And then we went to another lake. Now, what, more, what was that one called? Crummock, Crummock Lake. Um, so yeah, or Crummock Water possibly, I'm not sure. 3847. So we went there, that was really remote. Um, but yeah, he loved it. <laughs> and we went out again for a meal that evening. And then on the Sunday, we pretty much had to start making our way back quite early because again, of the long drive. Um, so we drove down past a lake called Grasmere and he had a swim there. And then we drove home. So yeah, it was a really nice weekend. We don't often get a weekend, just the two of us like that. Um, because we don't live near to family particularly. It's just, you know, it, it means asking someone to look after our son. And he's historically not always been that keen to go stay with people who weren't us anyway. So yeah, it, we don't get many opportunities and it was really lovely. I've got some here with multiple bags. They're probably not going to fit in these, are they? Um, so we came home on the Sunday and all of us were completely well at this point. <laughs> but the next day, so like this is long past my mum had had COVID. So we didn't catch COVID from her. But spoiler alert, we all had COVID coming. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my, my son came home from school on the Monday and he said, oh, I've got a headache and a really dry sore throat. And I thought, oh, I know what this is. He's had it once before and that was basically his symptoms. So yeah, he was at home. He didn't feel ill for too long, but he was testing positive for a week. So we kept him home because he was infectious. And then my husband came down with it towards the end of the week and I came down with it too. So yeah, <laughs> we were just glad that it didn't happen the week before when we were away and that we were able to just hole up and, you know, not expose anyone else. And no one else seemed to come down with it. Like my son can't have been infectious when he was away with my in-laws because they were fine. So yeah, it could have been worse. And uh, luckily my husband and I had it very mildly and my son was probably the most poorly out of us, but he was, he was okay within a couple of days. So it's just one of those things. Right, I don't think it's worth tipping that input in a baggie, is it? I'll just keep those. Um, but yeah, COVID's gonna COVID, it is everywhere. Creator. Oh, what have I done? 3808. I couldn't find the sticker then. I thought I'd gone the wrong way. So be careful out there, guys. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I know what's some big news from this month. I opened a, a shop on TikTok. So I've spoken to you lots of times before about my Etsy shop. I try not to go on about it, but then it's also... A big part of my life because this is what I do for work. So I sell scented putty and various other things on Etsy and for a long time I had thought about branching out to other platforms because you get different customers on different platforms so there's a whole different market and it's just you know what if something were to go wrong on Etsy and all my eggs are in one basket that kind of thinking. So I signed up to TikTok shop and it has been 
it has been chaotic, it's been busy, but it's been really, really fun. Um, because yeah, it, it's, it's done better than I expected. Right, sorry, there's been a rather long interlude while I've had to go and get Harry back because he was not where he was supposed to be. Um, <laughs> he's back home now, don't worry. So, oh, that's, oh no, those are, right, yeah. Those are spares of ones I've already done. <laughs> Oh, I've got to figure out what I'm doing now. So I'm going to chop some of these up and then have a think about where I was up to. I believe I was talking about TikTok shop, wasn't I? Yes. So TikTok shop, I think, has been interesting and just like useful experience for me as a small business owner to try selling in a really different way. It's it's not really a platform where people browse, I don't think, or not in the same way as they do somewhere like Etsy. So you can go on there and you can type in diamond painting putty and it will bring you up results such as my putty. But most of it, I think, is... Like, most sales on there are linked to content creator promotion. And there were a couple of people who already knew and liked my putty who I mentioned to them that I was on TikTok shop now, who have done an amazing job of promoting it and just, you know, getting it out there. And that has been so, so, so helpful. And I've been able to give them a small amount of commission. And yeah, it's just, it's a whole different ball game. It, and it's, it's interesting and it's exciting to me doing things differently, having done things in the same way on Etsy for a long time, if that makes sense. And I, it's got me updating my own TikTok more regularly as well because, you know, I've been meaning to do more TikToks for a long time and now I have more motivation to make time for it because that's another way to promote my products and, and get them out there to people. So yeah, I feel like it's, you know, I'm learning new skills, I'm doing new things and of course it's also very helpful for my small business that it's, it's helped me to reach new customers so yeah hopefully people are liking what they see and it's been really motivating being so busy because there have been a fair few sales on there I mean this is the first Saturday in a few weeks where I haven't actually worked and well I sort of am because I'm filming and I did make a couple of TikTok videos earlier but I haven't made putty because this week was a little bit quieter and I felt I could afford to have it off but the past couple of weeks I've been making putty Monday through to Saturday just to try and restock and make sure I can keep both shops stocked. So yeah, I don't ever want to be running a kind of FOMO model shop in, in either of my shops. You know, I don't want it to be, oh my goodness, there's only this many putties on there. You know, you've got to buy it quick and not stop to think about it. I want there to always be lots of choice and options so people can shop at leisure. But providing that for two shops, that on some days between them can be very busy has been a new logistical challenge you know i'm having to scale up what i am able to produce in one go which is all good fun but yeah it's just been a bit new and different i also mentioned on my facebook group recently that i will in fact be doing another advent calendar this year last year i think i mentioned um that i did an advent calendar and I did, I made 40 and then I made a couple of extras for, you know, if things go missing in the post that I was able to, to pass to people later on. But yeah, it, it went down well. People liked it. It sold out quickly. Um, so I was excited to do it again, but I've been thinking about it and planning, like low key planning all year, really thinking about what I can do to make it just as appealing to people, but also not exactly the same as last year. Um, so things like, for instance, last year, all of the putty scents that I put in there were Christmas scents because it's an advent calendar. But there's kind of only so many Christmas scents you can do before they start to get a bit samey. Um, so this year it's going to be a combination of Christmas scents because I've been trying lots of new shops with different oils. So I, I can definitely get some different ones in the mix. But there will also be some non-Christmas scents that will be exclusive to the advent calendar. I've partnered with a couple of other small shops to provide things that I don't personally make and sell. Um, so that's really cool. And yeah, I just, I'm really happy with how it's coming together already. I know it's mad talking about it in July. <laughs> but the thing is, I'll, I'll have it up for sale in early November. So 
it's really just three and a half months of work away and actually I need that time to fit in making the advent calendar contents around everything else and last year it took me a really really long time to do the last bit of packing it all up and actually making them look like pretty complete advent calendars and this year I do intend to make a few more it will still be a very limited quantity item because you know my arms have gained strength but there's only so much I can do at once um so it's pro I'm probably going to be making more like around 60 this year and I know from last year that is going to be days and days of work to pack them all up it doesn't sound like it would be that much but when it's 12 items per advent calendar and I want to pack them up all prettily it just it takes a while so yeah that has all been in the planning and that is that's been cool <laughs> Oh, uh, what else has been going on? My son has been doing a lot of cricket. It's um, it's not really the football time of year, the grassroots football team that he plays on. They have, they've had a few friendlies, they do training, but it's out of season for them. Um, and then summer is when he can do cricket, which is another sport he really enjoys. And he is, you know, proud mum alert. He's, he's pretty good at it. He's... A little sporty bean he tends to be good at most sports so he keeps getting selected for the older team so this he's kind of he's on an under under 11s team but that's actually under 10s and under, under 11s so it's two age groups and typically the younger people play a slightly gentler version of the sport called pairs cricket where you can't really get knocked out and that kind of thing um and then the older ones play traditional cricket, like 11 aside cricket. But recently he's been selected for the, the, the 11 aside team quite a lot. So he's been loving that. It's, ugh, I mean, every time I watch, I'm a bit sort of heart in mouth because I've watched other kids on his team just get really unlucky. And, you know, the first ball they face is brilliant and they get bowled out and that's it. And <laughs> it's just brutal. He hasn't had that happen to him yet, but it, it will it will happen at some point, I'm sure. But he's been really enjoying that. And his football team is... Well, they're getting prepared for the new season. There's been some changes. It's, it gets a bit political. If you ask me, some parents do not teach their children very healthy lessons about how to treat people. He is on the football team that is a slightly lower league team than um, the other team. <laughs> so we're under the same bracket of the same club, but there's a couple of different teams that play under it in the age group. And the other one tends to be in a higher league. And they then treat our team as a kind of feeder team. And it's not supposed to be, you know, it's, it's not like this is the development team and this is the main team. They're just two teams and they happen to be working at different levels. And a lot of that, to be honest, is to do with our team being a bit more inclusive um, and not being overly selective, which is, you know, things that I applaud at this age. Kids that want to play football should be able to play football. But what happens is the other team needs a new player. They just kind of reach out and yoink someone from ours <laughs> and they've done it a few times and it's just it's really hard on the kids you know they work hard all season they improve they maybe move up in leagues um some of their players really come along and then the other team's like oh you're good now we'll have you and the rest of the team is just left sort of picking up the pieces and having to get new people in to replace them I mean they did it to us last year and they literally took our only goalie with no notice and it's like, this is just, it's not a nice way to treat the other kids. And it's also, I just feel really strongly that it is not a good life lesson for the kids, you know? <laughs> like, my son doesn't get poached because his dad is an assistant coach on the team. So even though he is genuinely a good player, and again, it's not just, you know, mummy goggles, I'm don't tend to be that person to be honest I'm more likely to be unfairly critical <laughs> um but he is good but he doesn't get asked to leave because of that reason 
but you get all these other people who who just they're like oh it's I would never do it I would never leave the team and then they get asked to leave and they just go with no notice and then I mean one of them did it recently and then she has been trying to poach more players from our team she's not even the coach of the team her son's moved to it just it makes me sad sorry this is such a long rant about something that won't be interesting to most people but it really makes me sad that adults are willing to a let down the remaining team by just letting their kids leave at no notice because the kids obviously they get given an opportunity and they're excited and they want to take it but also that the parents don't try and teach anything about loyalty to their kids and I'm not saying that you know if if a, a kid is really good and ready to move on to another team that they should be held back but there are ways to do it it doesn't have to be what it always seems to be at the moment which is oh I've been trying out with the other team in secret and I like it and now I'm gone like that no notice no time for you to recruit a replacement I just I would not let my son behave that way if he wanted to leave the team, we would be communicating and saying, hey, this is what we're thinking of doing. We will give you notice and all of that kind of thing. It's frustrating. So yeah, that's, I feel like I'm being a bit gobby today. <laughs> I don't know, I, I went off on one there, but you know, it, it hurts when you see your kid really disappointed and sad because his team has got to rebuild from nothing again because another team needed some players and rather than recruiting externally like they're supposed to, they just yoink them from his team. <sighs> hmm. Anyway, the clubs got involved now and um, sent out a message saying like, can we remember that there are ways to do these things? No one is saying that the kids can't move around teams if, if that's right for them, but can coaches speak to coaches first? Can we not be approaching parents and, and children directly? Can we not be doing this with no notice? So. Hopefully it will improve because, yeah, it's it's rough on them. Oh, dear. What else has been going on? I mean, not a huge amount because, like I say, I've been working a lot. Um, so I've been really, really, really protective of my Sundays. I'm not really wanting to do anything on them because I've just, you know, I've needed that day of rest and to diamond paint and unwind and all of that kind of good thing it's almost the school summer holidays so that will be a whole new dynamic having my son at home for several weeks lovely to have him but it does mean a lot more juggling whereas you know time that I'm working in the day I need to be you know making sure that he's entertained as well and like this is <laughs> basically it's just new to me is all because I didn't work since I was pregnant until I had him other than in very very part-time flexible capacities so last summer was the first experience I had of what a lot of people have have had every year of having their kids of, of having to juggle in that way and it was fine and we got through it but it was hectic <laughs> so I'm just I'm thinking ahead to how we're going to manage it Well, I'm in a gobby mood. I'll, uh, I'll share that it was the UK election a week and a bit ago. I'm not actually going to talk about politics. Um, a, I, I don't want to be controversial and upset anyone because I firmly believe in everyone's right to vote how they want to or not vote or whatever they want to do. Um, but yeah, it, it, all I'll say is I was happy with the result. <laughs> Out of the possible options that there were, I was I was pleased with the result we had. And because my husband and I are quite nerdy, we like to stay up and watch all the election stuff. So, I mean, I do this regardless of whether I, I'm happy with the result or not. But this year, we, we wanted to stay up and, and just kind of in, enjoy the moment. <laughs> I think, well... I went to bed about half seven in the morning and would you believe I couldn't sleep? <laughs> I was too keyed up. My husband just never went to bed. <laughs> he just stayed up right the way through till the next night. He is a nutter. But yeah, it was fun. We, um, 
we've just had a fun evening together really had a few drinks um so I felt a little bit worse for wear the next day <laughs> but yeah it was a bit of an occasion I suppose these things don't come along very often and yeah I just I I enjoyed them I'll probably do the same in November for the US election because I, I did that last time round I don't know what it is I just find it really fascinating all the dynamics of it all the different personalities everyone wanting different things and how you can possibly come together as a country to try and make everyone happy I mean you can't you can't ever make everyone happy but yeah it's an interesting time and I feel optimistic not you know over the moon or anything I'm not saying that I'm I'm living my ideal political world right now but um I feel optimistic and we've also been watching the Euros. My husband and I never really used to watch football, although we did probably watch big events like this. The Euros is a big football tournament, or soccer, if you're American, as I know a lot of my viewers are. But over here, what you call soccer is just football, and we don't play what you call football. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big championship between all the European nations. And... Yeah, we, we tend to watch it, and even more so now. My son's so into football. My family's got a sweepstake going on. I'm, I'm long since out. I think I had Slovakia and Georgia. So, yeah, I didn't have a huge amount of, of <laughs> likelihood of winning um, in terms of the odds. But against all the odds, England is still in it. I'm actually Welsh, but Wales didn't qualify. Um, so in the absence of Wales being there, I will support England. So, you know, I'm pleased for them. There's a lot of excitement and hype because football's a really big deal in the UK. And by the time you see this video, it, it, I don't think this will go up before the final because the final's tomorrow evening. And I don't normally put up videos on the weekend. It's currently Saturday. Um, so yeah, it, I'm not expecting that England will win, to be honest, because I think Spain, who they're up against, are probably the better team, and England have not played their best football for most of this tournament. They've kind of just done enough to stay in, but they haven't exactly been trouncing everyone. But you never know, you know, once it once it gets to the game, anything can happen. And there's a lot of excitement. Oh my goodness! How did I do that? Had I already cut it open and I didn't realise? I guess I did. What an absolute muppet. <laughs> right. Quick commercial break while I fix my very silly mistake there. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> oh dear, I've lost quite a few to this little ridge in the table, but I'm not too worried because I know 209 is one that I've got spares of. So if I run out, it, it will be fine. But yeah, wow, what a wally. So yeah, the final's tomorrow. And as I was saying, there's a lot of excitement because England hasn't won a major tournament in a very long time. But this, here's the thing, here's what I was going to say. I've scratched myself as well. What is going on? I don't know how I did that either. The England men's team has not won a tournament in a very long time. They did get to the finals of the World Cup a couple of years ago. Um, and they've actually been doing better in tournaments in recent years than they have done for a very long time. But the England women's team, the Lionesses, won the Euros two years ago. So, what am I doing? Those should be in there. So yeah, hoping they win. Not expecting it, but hoping. But yeah, it's a shame that there is not more hype for the women's game because they are just as talented. There's this, there's this thing that I read about how and why the women's game doesn't have the same kind of renown. Um, and a little bit of it is just basic misogyny, let's face it. Um, but there was a time in about 1920 or something that they actually started to block the women's team from playing I think because it was proving quite popular and they were told they couldn't play because of like I don't know propriety or something anyway there was a reason why it stopped and then of course because it wasn't really played the quality did 
decline, you know, when people got together, because you, you need that competition of having all the teams competing with each other to keep driving standards. So, of course, women's football fell behind because it wasn't allowed to be promoted and watched and celebrated in the same way. But if you go back a few years ago, I can remember watching and thinking, wow, they're really good. They can do things I could never do, but I can see the difference in quality between what they're doing in the men's game. Whereas these days, I think if you're open minded about it and you're not just stuck in the mindset of the men's game being, you know, the main big deal. They are so talented. There was a video, I think it was for the last Women's Euros competition actually, that the French put out this advert to tackle this idea, where they showed this video of men racing around the pitch, you know, doing all the clever football things, <laughs> doing brilliant maneuvers and scoring goals and stuff. And then as the ad progressed, it transpired that that was basically AI. And what they had done was they had taken footage of the women doing the things that looked pretty impressive and clever and, you know, skilled. And then they had used AI to make them look like men. And the point of it was, if you were admiring this and thinking this was great football when you thought it was men just a minute ago, you know, don't forget that this is the, what the women are doing is great too. So yeah, I really enjoyed that because uh, I consider myself a bit of a feminist. Where have all these giant bags come from? Oh no, that should be in these. Oh, oh well. Not a lot I can do about it now. I mean, I could do, but I'm not going to. Right. They should have been in those big bags. What a muppet. So these are all going to need... So it's odd because they put that in a big bag but there's hardly anything in there. These are all going to need baggies, aren't they? Because they're not actually going to go in a whole pot. That's probably just me not concentrating, isn't it? hear Harry scratching on the carpet upstairs. He's cross because I brought him inside after after it being a little bit tricky to get to him before. We have sports day at school this week. It is so different to how they did it in my day. In my day it was just a flat out competition and the people like me that weren't good at it um, you just you just didn't do that well. I remember one year when I won the beanbag race. I must have been like nine or ten or something. Goodness knows how. Everyone else must be having a really off day and maybe my low centre of gravity because I was the short kid helped. Because <laughs> the beanbag race you had to like run and then pick up beanbags and then carry on running so you had to keep stooping down. I don't know. Anyway, that was like the pinnacle of my sporting achievement. <laughs> Never to be replicated. But for the most part, it just, yeah, wasn't my thing. My son is actually, as I've said, really sporty, but they do this thing where, well, at his school at least, so there's different activities and all of the different classes are moving around the different activities. Um, and then within each activity, they've got the class sort of arranged into teams and three or four of them will have a go at once. So for instance, there's, there is a race and I think three of them raced each other and then points were awarded based on who came first, second, third out of those. And then they moved on to the next grouping and so on. And I don't know how they arrange them so cleverly because they always seem to, but the sportiest kids tend to be against each other. And then you kind of get to the less sporty kids so that the kid that doesn't have a hope in hell of winning a race against the really sporty kids has got a bit more of a chance of at least not being embarrassed in their own race. So it's it's good. I like it. It does mean that the whole thing goes on for a very long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was good. My, my son got... He wasn't very happy with how some of it went. I was going to go into details, but I won't because it's not fair to talk about something that would embarrass him. But there were just some things that I think he had expectations of doing well at because of how he can do those things generally. And then on the day, they didn't go so well and that was tough for him. You know, it's it's hard being disappointed, isn't it? It's, it's particularly hard when you think that you're going to have a really good experience of something and then it doesn't, it doesn't turn out so well, but he was fine. And 
And what else? I have been binge watching The Vampire Diaries recently whenever I dye and paint. It's, I think it's like my third time of watching it and I only watched it for the first time in about 2017. <laughs> I really like it. Any, any other Vampire Diaries fans? It's interesting though because I'm watching it this third time and noticing things that I really did not notice the first time around. First of all, it tells me how terrible my memory is. I did know this bit before because there's so many things I'd forgotten or like the order of when things happened and that kind of thing that I just, in my head it was completely different despite having watched it twice already. And then there's other things like, I'm watching it this time, I'm thinking, I'm not sure how good an actress I would say the person who plays Elena is. I feel like sometimes she's a little bit one dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not really a sort of, it's not a show that's going to win any awards anyway, is it? So I'm not being very charitable there, but yeah, it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm on, I think I'm on series five now and there's eight series, I believe. Yeah, because when I discovered it, I watched series one to seven and then series eight wasn't out yet. Oh, the ending of series eight got me. <laughs> Obviously I won't say in case I spoil it for anyone. But yeah, that's, that's fun. I'm really enjoying that. Prior to that, I was binging Supernatural and I, I, I will go back to that afterwards, but I think I'd watched several series and then the desire to keep binging sort of faded away. But not sure that I have ever actually finished Supernatural. I feel like I re-watched parts of Supernatural loads of times where I want to catch up and I don't quite remember what I saw so I need to re-watch things and then I've, I'm not sure I've ever actually got to the end so I definitely do want to do that again. I also recently was listening um, to audiobooks of some Helen Forrester novels I listened, well, no, I didn't listen. I read those a lot when I was younger, probably like a teenager. And they were really good, but they're, they're quite, um, it's the historical nature of them that I like. They're quite dated now. There are some things that are said that are quite inappropriate by modern standards at times. Um, but, it, you know, they were written a while ago and they're set mostly in the Second World War period. Now, there's a lot because there's a series that she wrote that is about her experiences as a child when her wealthy family lost all of their money and they had to move to Liverpool and they were very, very, very impoverished. And there's a whole series about her early years moving into adulthood and part of that is set in the war. But then she's also written um, fictional books, novels about that period. Um, the wartime period and um, I, I just I love historical fiction um, and I find those really fascinating there's a lot about the blitz um, so the second world war um, the period of time when uh, a lot of Britain was getting bombed and Liverpool as an important dock was getting particularly hard hit and she lived through that and, and experienced that and, and wrote about that in the autobiographical novels um, and then she used that information as well in several um, historical fiction novels. Gosh, I'm struggling with my words. So yeah, they were enjoyable. And then I am trying to work my through my way through the Throne of Glass series on audiobook as well. But I don't know what it is because it is exactly my sort of thing, and yet. They never seem to grab me that much, so it's quite a long slog where I don't listen to it very often, but then when I do, I'll, I'll listen to it a fair bit. I think I'm on book three, or is it four? And I feel like that's controversial in this community because I know a lot of people love that series. <laughs> I do enjoy it. I want to get to the end. It's just, it's taking me a long time. And then when I have time to actually pick up a book, I've been reading How to Kill Your Family. Um, which is, <laughs> like, it's a 
it's not a manual for me to follow or anything don't worry <laughs> I'm not I'm not confessing to something it's um it's fictional anyway and it's a woman who who had I think her father abandoned her well abandoned her mother and never stepped up and he's very wealthy and her mother and her suffered a lot and basically when she grows up she decides to take out him and all of his family and it details all of that but in Oh, uh, you know it's not gory or stressful to read it's not that kind of book it's just it's kind of witty and interesting and different and I'm interested to see where it goes but I just I so rarely end up actually picking up a book these days I feel like a lot of my leisure time is spent well obviously diamond painting but then after that often I don't know I just sometimes a book feels like too much hard work to pick up even though I know when I do pick it up I'll really enjoy it because I've always been a reader I don't know I don't know how much of it is busyness and how much of it is a change in tastes but I feel like I can't concentrate on things in the way I used to Ugh. anyway almost there and the static wasn't bad actually was it there was just a few bags where I felt like I needed to add and watch them call it a dryer sheet so how am I going to organize these now because I've just sort of put them in randomly but they need some sort of system let's see do I just go by numbers within sections I normally just organise my Diamond Art Club drills by the number, like the DMC order. Um, what do you reckon? I could do, I mean, I, if I don't do that, then I normally organise by symbol type. So do things like numbers, then letters, then so, but like there's only eight in this section. That doesn't really make sense. I could sort of do it a little bit or like a rainbow effect I don't know let's let's try right what does that give me if I do right there aren't any numbers so there's letters and then I would normally do mathematical symbols arrows It doesn't make much difference really does it I'm just I'm going to learn where they are because of muscle memory and I think that will be fine but let's just do it where I can so two four eight the numbers in this section and then I've got c o u x any mathematical symbols no not really so then I'll do arrows and then, I mean, it just gets a bit random after that, doesn't it? <laughs> now, this section, I've got some numbers, so we'll get those out. And there's some letters. Yeah, there's a bit more going on to organise with this one. Right, there's a one. So one, three five nine nope seven nine I'm, I'm chatting as I'm doing this but I think I will probably edit this out because you don't really need to hear my my sort of chain of thought um fst mind you I've said that now so <laughs> if this is still in there you'll know I didn't do that Let's see what I decide. Um, and then F, K, no, H, <laughs> Linda Alphabet Cat, H, I, J, K, L, M N O P. <laughs> this is tragic. <laughs> uh, okay. Q R S T. Use over there. W W X Y. Okay. <laughs> so that's those. And then I 
do have a few mathematical symbols. So let's get those out. So I've got... Oof. I've got percentage mark, a minus, a plus, a tick um, and then I will do directional ones so arrows I, I suspect these will, will get rearranged again because <laughs> uh, I don't think I've done this very well and then I could do those triangles together and then I'm going to do oh I've missed an arrow right I won't do those there then I'll save that for a single one let's do dots and then Two dots goes before three dots and then I'll do like lines Let's stick on a line that's that's made of lines that's also quite liney <laughs> that let's pop that random star up there oh this is like the worst system ever guys don't do it like I did it <laughs> But it's done and I'll probably rearrange them, but it, it's fine. I'll figure out where they are as I go through. So that is me done. I'll pop these extra ones up in the lid and I am all good to go. I'm looking forward to doing this one. So thank you for watching this. If you have stuck along with me till the end here. <laughs> Uh, I really appreciate you being here um, and yeah let me know what you think of this project if you've seen this one before um, and yeah hopefully you'll enjoy seeing me working on this so thank you for watching if you have enjoyed this video please consider dropping a like on it if you are not yet subscribed to the channel and you've liked what I've done here please consider doing that and I will hopefully see you again soon bye bye <laughs>